Hello, guys. Let's clean and have some fun. Are you ready? <laughs> Susan's home is quite an interesting mess. There's a lot of food everywhere and two coffee makers. Interesting. Lots of empty packages too, but the fridge is pretty empty. Okay, what is going on? Oh, this sink smells bad. Rotten eggs and everything. I'm so sad that you can't smell through the screen. <laughs> Seems like there's been some cooking going on here. Should we also peek in the other rooms? <laughs> oh, there's a box on the floor from the fridge and it's got coffee in it. Oh, a box where all sorts of things get tossed, but there's a rotten chicken package in it. <laughs> okay, here's the view in the living room. A lot of clothes. While cleaning, I've seen that people usually have a lot of clothes, but one thing Susan doesn't have is sheets. Clean sheets. I receive a lot of complaints when I put clean sheets on dirty beds. But Susan has been living here for over three years without bed sheets whatsoever. But guys, look at this balcony! It's something I've never seen before. It's full of clothes. Rotten clothes because they are all wet and dirty. <laughs> dirty delicious. Oh, the bathroom is such a nice color, very cheerful, just like me. <laughs> oh, there's no lamp there. Okay, let's start cleaning and welcome to follow Susan's life with me. I will tell you her story in a bit. But first, if you're wondering who I am. Hi, I'm Auri Katarina, a 31-year-old Finnish woman who travels the world cleaning people's messy homes for free. <laughs> I've combined my two passions, helping people and cleaning. Nowadays, I can make a living from my work, even though I always clean for free. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Check this out! I don't know what it is. It's a hard rock, but moldy? <laughs> oh, anyway, I love it. <laughs> Nowadays, I have three main sponsors who pay me monthly. Scrub Daddy, City Cleaning and BetterHelp. And of course, you. You are my cleaning friends and you help me by cleaning with me. Initially, I didn't earn any money and did this on weekends alongside my day job. Back then, I was a supervisor at a cleaning company and I loved that job. But I might love this one a little more or a lot more because now I can clean. <laughs> okay, but that's enough about me now. Let's talk about Susan who lives here, currently is living here and has been here for almost three years now. But first we need to talk about this thing or the stuff that I'm scooping out of here. <laughs> What on earth is this? It looks amazing, though it doesn't smell that good, but I don't care. It's still fun. Or it was fun. It's over. <laughs> Later, I asked Susan what was in the sink, and she said it was coffee. So she had empty coffee filters in her sink, and she mentioned that she didn't know why she was doing that. Hey guys, there's the rotten chicken. Or is it some type of ready meal or something? Well, anyway, interesting, right? But now let's talk about Susan and her life, which includes something tragic that no one should go through. First, let me tell you a bit about what Susan is like on the outside. So Susan is in her 30s. She's dressed neatly and was a bit nervous, but still very friendly. I saw her in the morning before I start cleaning and she gave me the key and we talk about her life. She was just like any of us, someone's mother, a really nice co-worker, a cashier at the store, a woman you might pass on the street. She had blonde hair, a small smile. Her name was Susan and she had a terrible secret along with reasons behind that secret. And now I'm gonna polish the secret clean. Our story starts when Susan got married. She had met the love of her life, 
At the same time, Susan was also studying and soon she became pregnant, which was of course expected and desired. Soon a little boy was born to Susan and her husband. They named the boy Jack. Life with a child was of course sometimes challenging, but not so challenging that they couldn't have another little one. A couple years later, Emily was born. No one's life is probably smooth sailing all the time. And of course, they had family issues. And Susan, as the mother of two young children, also felt tired sometime. That's normal, I guess. So they had a normal family life. Sometimes it's hard to understand that these people can be mothers, sisters, wives, like normal people. But yeah, years went by and the family life was quite normal. But then Emily started to show some strange symptoms and Susan took her to the doctor again and again. Of course, Susan was really worried about what could be bothering Emily. Sometimes she didn't eat well, sleeping was hard, as if she was in pain or discomfort, but she couldn't really explain it. At this point, Emily was only three years old. So Susan took Emily to the doctors and at first they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Finland has free and good healthcare, but not all illnesses are recognized right away, unfortunately. I'm not entirely sure how long it took for Emily to get her diagnosis. And unfortunately, the diagnosis was devastating, but not impossible, because Emily had cancer. I'm not exactly sure what type of cancer she has diagnosed with, but it was one of that could be treated. So at this point in the story, the family's son Jack was six years old and Susan had completed her professional training. She was a nurse and worked in a hospital herself. Susan's husband worked in the construction industry and everything was otherwise normal. But they had faced a truly shocking and sad event. However, they still had hope that in the treatment for cancer is good and it's no longer the worst possible situation. Still, it's really unfair that a young child has to suffer from a serious illness. When a three-year-old child is diagnosed with cancer, it can be an overwhelming experience for the parents. Initially, they might experience a range of emotions including shock, disbelief, fear, anxiety, guilt, sadness, depression, and anger. It's also natural for parents to feel anger towards various aspects of the situation or even guilt, thinking that somehow it's their fault, their child has cancer. However, it's important to understand that most childhood cancers have no known cause and are not due to anything the parents did. Experiencing sadness, depression and anxiety is also common, like I said. These feelings can be intense and might affect the parents' ability to take care of themselves and their family. So, for example, cleaning can be tough. Emily's treatments began, and at first everything seems to be going well. But eventually the cancer spread. And hearing this was truly heartbreaking. Like, I don't know, while cleaning I found some papers among the things, and I also found a picture of Emily when she was just a little child. And unfortunately, she never got to grown up. Guys, when Susan shared this with me, I couldn't, I couldn't even really imagine how she must have felt. Is there like anything worse than losing your own child? I don't know. By the way, guys, I found this box in the living room and it had some dishes in it. 
Still wrapped in paper, it seems like Susan packed these from another home but hasn't gotten around to put them back in their place yet. But yeah, as losing your own child wasn't enough, more hardships were on the way. In the end, Susan and her husband split up. I don't know if it was because of Emily or if they had other problems, but it still happened. And then Susan moved into a rental apartment with Jack. They didn't move into this one, but a different one, somewhere else. And the problem started right away. So Susan continued to work as a nurse, but she got fired from her job due to some issues at work. I don't know what. It seems like dark clouds had spread to every area of her life. Then Jack moved in with his father. Because their home, Susan and Jack's, started to become very, very messy. Susan found it hard to keep up with cleaning and she felt so overwhelmed. Susan really tried to find work and managed to get some temporary jobs here and there, which helped her a bit financially. However, she soon fell into a debt spiral because she bought things on credit, but she didn't pay her credit card bills. So the debt just kept getting bigger. Clothes were left on the floor and drinks and food were spilled on them, causing them to rot. Instead of cleaning, Susan just bought new clothes. She couldn't muster the energy to change the sheets, wash the dishes or maintain her home. Often, she would just use one pot to cook pasta, adding tuna or some other meat to it eating the same meal every day after day, using only one fork. She would sometimes wash, wash the pot or choose buy a new one. Susan really wanted to work. I was actually quite surprised by how much she wanted to get back into working life. She said that it would help her take her mind off things if she could just get a job. However, on the other hand, her mental health wasn't in a great state. So, even so, she currently is in some temporary job while I clean. I mean, I think it's not uncommon for people to seek work as a way to find the structure, purpose and distraction from personal issues. However, balancing work with mental health challenges can be difficult. So yeah, Susan does want to work, but she can't manage to clean her, her own home. It's too overwhelming for her. But yeah, I haven't gotten to this part of the story yet. Let's finish cleaning the kitchen and then move on to the bathroom, which is quite easy and quick to clean, but still pretty satisfying. After that, I'll continue the story while I'll clean the living room. There's just some random clothes. Oh, but Susan asked me to keep one shirt that's buried under the other clothes. Oh, there it was. It's rotten and smells bad, but she said it's very valuable to her because it belongs to her son. Hmm, it seems like Susan has managed to keep this bathroom in a pretty good state which is somewhat surprising, given the challenges she's facing elsewhere in her life and home. But you probably know me, so I have to admit, I always enjoy it when I come across a really dirty and disgustingly wonderful sink. <laughs> I mean, I can't be the only one <laughs> when the transformation from dirty to clean provides a sense of accomplishment and can be almost be like therapeutic. For me, cleaning is like a process into a rewarding experience. Ah, I feel so good 
well, while I'm doing this. Not only when I'm finished this, but while I'm doing this, when I can see death change. I feel like clean or cleanliness is kind of boring. You don't have anything. But when something is dirty, you have something there. You can change it. And that feels so great. This toilet or bathroom isn't among the worst I've seen, but it's still pretty nice to clean. And it won't take long at all. I mean, maybe half an hour and that's it. Okay, that needs a little bit time, so I'm gonna rinse it meanwhile. Now I'm pouring some acid-based toilet bowl cleaner because there's some dirt. Stubborn dirt which doesn't come off. Let's wash this floor with chief cream. I usually use uh, dish soap, but today I decided to use chief cream. And it works pretty good. Yeah, looking nice. Ah, this is so satisfying. And the floor drain isn't clogged, which is amazing too. <laughs> Okay, now the toilet probably could be ready for a good scrubbing. Let's see, let's see. Okay, looking good, let's try it. And yes, everything is coming off. Ah, love it. <laughs> okay, a little dusting. Wow. So satisfying! <laughs> I also went to the store to buy a new lamp. It's wonderful that I can do these nice little things that aren't just about cleaning. <laughs> I called Sami and he was telling me how to install it. And it worked! <laughs> I was amazed! I was so happy! <laughs> okay, now we are in a situation where Jack has moved out and Susan's home, I just want to clarify, not this home, but Susan's home is still in a terrible condition. And then she had to move out of that rental apartment because the rent was too high for her and Susan was running out of money. However, she couldn't manage to clean up and left the home in the condition it was in. I mean, have you seen those news stories where a tenant has left a home in a terrible state? We never really heard the stories behind what terminates as a nightmare tenant. By the way, guys, I forgot to tell you, Susan said that she has lost her keys, so I found it! I'm so happy! <laughs> yeah, so Susan couldn't lock her door because she didn't have a key. Not even a single key. Yeah, that was horrible. So she always left her door open. But yeah, and of course it's wrong to leave your messes for someone else to deal with. And I'm not taking sides on what's right or what should be done. I just want to tell you this story, that Susan is an example of such a person. There are difficult situations because I understand landlords whose properties are destroyed. I've cleaned many of those. And I also understand those people who just can't do anything about their situation. Or they can but they mentally can't. So Susan left almost all her belongings in her previous apartment. Then she moved here. I believe Susan has been living in this apartment for about a half year now. The first time she asked for my help was six months ago. And at that time she said she had been living here for a month. Guys, look at this shoe. I don't know what that is, but it's ruined, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, the first time she was too embarrassed to accept help. 
So when she sent me an email and asked for my help, I agreed. But she said no, she can't. She tried to do this cleaning by herself. It's this this sometimes this happened. People ask for my help, but then they refuse to get it because it's too embarrassing. So Susan tried to clean by herself, but she couldn't do it. So six months after, she sent me a new email and I agreed again. And this time she was ready to accept help. Because now, six months after, the situation has completely gotten out of control and she can't handle it anymore. As you saw, Susan had no sheets and she slept among rotten food and fish sticks. The walls are dirty and the dirt is spreading everywhere. This is a stubborn stain, so I spread some Sinis kitchen cleaner and I'm placing paper on top of it so it keeps it mo moist so the food stain is going to be so soft and I can just wipe it away. I think in a half an hour. Oh, the bed is all so dirty. No way. Okay, I try to scrape it off. Susan also said that she hasn't been able to put things away from her previous apartment so it helped when I for example put away the dishes and installed the lamps on the ceiling. Now I'm trying to wipe this stain off. I don't have any textile cleaner with me and I don't want to bring it into these apartments because it might introduce pests into the pipes and then I'd be spreading them to other places. Hey, this stain is gone! Amazing! <laughs> that was easy, right? I can't wait to start cleaning the balcony. I want to see what kind of surprises I might find there. Okay, it's still fun to wash this shelf. By the way, these Sinis dish brushes have a head that can be used as a scraper. It's so handy while cleaning. Of course, it's made of plastic, but still, if you have for example, a food stain or something like that, you can just scrape it off and it won't scratch. And also one thing why I love Sinis dish brushes is that because they have replaceable heads. This feature allows me to switch out the old brush head for a new one as needed. In my kitchen, I always keep two of those brushes on hand. When one gets dirty, I put it in the dishwasher so it gets clean there. And then I uh, replace the other one, a clean brush. This way I can rotate between them, ensuring I always have a clean brush available for use. Also environmental friendly. And I love that. Hey! Now the beds are looking so much better. Oh, there was some weed, I think. <laughs> I don't know what was that. Okay, looking better. There are still some food stains, but it's better than it was. Sometimes people get mad at me because I don't change the beds or buy a new mattress or anything else. But I can't always know if a new mattress is needed. Like today, I went to a nearby store, but obviously they don't have a new mattresses. They just had lamps. It would take a long time if I went to the downtown area to buy something like a mattress. Sometimes I can do that, sometimes I do. But I'd rather spend that time cleaning. I can do that if I have extra time. And if Susan wants, she can go and buy a new mattress for herself. But of course, I always have new sheets in the back of my car. But mattresses are a bit more difficult to carry. But okay guys, are you ready to clean this balcony with me? Oh my god, it's so much clothes. 
I don't know what to do with this because Susan didn't really tell me so I'm assuming she wants to keep all of them so I'm putting them into these bags and if she doesn't want to keep them she can toss them this part was so much fun <laughs> i'm so glad that it's not a winter time it's not that cold even though we are in finland and it's always cold here <laughs> but i mean that was quick like i remember what when i was doing this it felt like i was picking up these clothes for ages like this took me at least an hour or two so yeah it's really quick on the video <laughs> but now i can show you the before and after pictures and they are amazing i'm so happy look at this this looks like a home now and i love it susan have a new home kind of <laughs> She must be so happy when she gets back from work. And of course, I hope she has learned her lessons and now she knows how, how quickly her apartment can be messy and what things she can do to prevent that. So yeah, maybe she has learned now. But now I'm on my way to the next dirty home and I can't wait to meet you there. Please subscribe to my channel and next time we'll clean together again. See you. I love you all. Bye bye. <laughs>